When the sun rises and freshly deposited cattle dung warms up at Cluny Farm, Sepsit flies, amongst others, carrying pediculaster mites, are attracted by the dung's odor and are the first to colonize the pads to lay eggs. During egg deposition, fertilized phoretic female pediculaster passengers detach from their host and drop off into the dung to begin their way into the dung mass. Coprophagus dung beetles, often carrying mites and nematodes, follow the colonization sequence. Nematodes leave their carriers and disperse into the dung pad. Carnivorous beetles enter the pads by the time fly larvae are available. Predatory free-living mites like this mesostigmatid and columbra are also soon part of the dung ecosystem. Dung is ephemeral and dung breeding organisms have a limited time for their development within the pad. Tiny mites like pediculaster species need a transport carrier to move to fresh dung. In the course of their evolution, they developed a phoretic female stase, morphologically different from the stase that breeds in the pad. Female dimorphy has long been a source of confusion in the mites' taxonomy. Phoretic mites move around in search of suitable niches in the dung to lay small egg clutches. Her strongly sclerotized exoskeleton reduces the amount of water loss through evaporation during the flight on her carrier. She has a coalesced tibiotarsis of the first leg and a single, rather robust claw to securely latch onto her host. The two unguinal city, U1, U2, form a counterpiece in which the claw locks, like these of Pediculaster gautengensis, again to hold onto her carrier city. The fourth pair of legs has no pads. Pediculaster mites have no eyes but have several modified CT on their legs to enable them to communicate with the environment, like this striated olfactory sensulus omegam 1. Females have modified spherical botridial sense receptors on their prodorsum. Females lay small batches of spherical eggs. These eggs are laid individually at unevenly spaced intervals. Females are able to determine the sex of their offspring. Depending on the ambient temperature, the eggs develop into larvae within two days. This time series of a developing embryo moving in its membrane was taken through the convocal laser scanning microscope with transmitted light. Tiny transparent six-legged larvae emerge and actively move around in search of food. As the larva ages it becomes translucent and its crystalline substance accumulates dorsally. An inactive or quiescent larval stage lasts for about four days during which an internal reorganization prepares a varied adult for emergence. Adults are of three types, soft-skinned normal and sclerotized phoretic females and males. Adults are active. Normal females, however, become stationary soon after copulation. 
Males are slower than females. They move with their second and third pairs of legs, pulling their fourth pair along. This fourth pair is adapted for copulation. Their first pair of legs is in constant motion, probing the environment. Males continuously inspect quiescent larvae. And when a larva is about to hatch into an adult female, more than one male gather around her. Males help with the birth of adult females. There are two males near this emerging female adult. The larval gnatosoma is on the right. The males contest mating at an angle of 180 degrees with the emerging female. Males become exceedingly excited when the larval skin erupts and compete to mate with the newly born female. After copulation, female behavior patterns diverge. Normal females become stationary and physogastric within about 10 hours. Egg laying commences about 36 hours after copulation. The female lays about 4 to 7 eggs per hour at 23 degrees Celsius in a laboratory environment. The average number of eggs per female was about 200. In the dung, however, I counted clutches of between 40 and 50 eggs per normal female. The duration of an egg stage at 23 degrees Celsius is about 40 hours. As the dung environment deteriorates, the mite generation following becomes phoretic. An epigenetic trigger mechanism is thought to switch the formation of the alternative morph stays. Adult females vary greatly in size and degree of pigmentation. This is partly due to the process of aging, but variety within one population at different times suggests that genetic and nutritional factors are also involved. Phoretic females remain active after copulation in search for a fly pupa where they gather a mass to mount as soon as the insect emerges. In this footage, the pupa underneath the crawling mites was empty, but remained attractive to the mites for several hours afterwards. Phoretic females seem not always immediately ready to catch a right. Cresting behavior where mites stretch their first pair of legs in the air in search of chemical or mechanical clues only commences after an interval. When a questing female is touched on her dorsum, she sometimes turns around but mostly does not respond at all, like in this clip. However, when one touches her on her ventral side, she immediately gets hold of the needle and jumps on for a ride. Once the fertilized phoretic female has mounted its carrier, it is ready to fly to the next fresh dung pad and the life cycle commences anew.